we're going to go ahead and review the FireCom demonstration workflow for field service. So we'll go ahead and start off by opening up our service call center and this is where they'll record an incoming call. Now typically FireCom thinks of things in terms of addresses and not customer IDs. So we know that this customer <clears throat> is on Martin Luther King Boulevard so we'll just type Luther and hit the enterprise quick search which will show us all our customers with Luther in it which in this case they're at 2100 Martin Luther King Boulevard. So we'll accept that customer and now we'll go ahead and create a new line for this customer and see what service contracts they have. In this case, we'll just pick the first one available. Now, normally in Epicor, you'd have to now go out and create the service job, but we're going to use a keyboard macro program to automate this function to simulate what we're going to do with customization should they move forward. So it's going to go ahead, create the necessary service job, fill in the required information, and then schedule the job for available dispatching. And we're done. So now suppose uh, another customer calls in and this time this one we know uh, they're on Broadway. So we type 195 broad once again hit our search and we see that we're gonna have a customer rocket fuel which is at 195 Broadway in New York. We'll go ahead and accept them and again we're gonna look for their service contracts and we're gonna see that they don't have any so because of that we'll just go ahead and dispatch this as a service call in general and then invoke our macro to automatically create the required field service job again go ahead and schedule the job and we're done so at this point, we've gone through your typical day taking calls, and then the field uh, dispatch technician is going to want to look at scheduling. So if we go out to our schedule board, here we can see the hours in the day and the days of the week, as well as what's already scheduled. We see here we already have one of the jobs we entered, and the other one will be syncing shortly. So we'll go ahead and take this job and we can drag it within the hours here so for example let's say we want to give it to Larry Jones for the afternoon slot and on this one we'll just go ahead and show an alternative view this shows you the day as a whole and you can see more days out and let's say we want to issue this job to Susan Paulson for Monday again if you hover over the job you can see the details of the job including the address so we'll go to Susan Paulson and put that on for Monday So if he's called in, at this point we can open up this job and we can either simply flag it to in progress if he says he's arrived or if it, this is the point in the day where he says he's done with the job, we can go ahead, put it in progress and if he gives us his necessary time, we can add his timesheet right here saying the date that it was done on, the kind of work that he did, how many hours was it, let's say it was 2 hours and 30 minutes all fixed and submit. So we've gone ahead and entered that time and if he wasn't done with the job we could just save this and come back to it later or if it's complete right now we can go from in progress to completed. We've seen the job turn to gray because now job 153 has been completed as you can tell. So let's look at the scenario where the technician goes out and they need parts and they have to come back. So if we look at the other job for Susan, we'll go ahead into this job and we'll go ahead and change its status to completed because she's done for the day. We want to enter the time that she put in and we'll just pretend it's uh, Monday in this case. Let's say she was there two hours and we need uh, 001 PP part or some expected part here and we'll go ahead and say OK and save this. Now this saves the jobs completed but now because she needs to do a follow-up we will copy the job to a new job and right from here we can specify when we want her to go out and return so maybe she can come back on Tuesday. So we'll pick Tuesday 
However, now we'll go to the Products tab and put in what item she needs to bring. So she'll bring the 001PP, and maybe she needs two of these. So we'll go ahead and put two of these, and we'll also specify a reason, and save this. And now it goes ahead and schedules the job on the dispatch board for Tuesday. And behind the scenes, it's going to go ahead and create all the necessary components in Epicor to uh, make sure that these, this uh, job is uh, fully created and manageable. So now that the job has been created, you can see it's created a new service job 155, which we can see here. Or if we go into our service call center, we'll also see that there's a new service call number available now of 155 as well, which is the follow-up call that the system created automatically. Now at the end of the day, we'll go ahead and minimize this, the person who has to gather the materials for the technicians to come will go into the standard Epicor Fulfillment Workbench, which is the same tool that Firecom's distribution and manufacturing people will use, and here they're going to fulfill the service jobs. So we'll go ahead and do our search here and just say we want to fulfill service call jobs and see all the jobs that need materials, which we can see in our demo environment, uh, we have a number of these. But in this particular case, we see this job here that needs the 01PP. Maybe we needed that item for this, and we needed this item here. So we'll pick three of these to go fulfill as an example here. And then we can go ahead and select all or pick them one at a time and tell it we want to go ahead and reserve and release these for picking so that they don't get picked for other customers. It's gone ahead and done that. And one of the items, I believe, is serialized, so we can't automatically reserve it until we specify a serial number. And at this point, it then gives us the option if we want to print a picking sheet. So we'll go ahead and do that. So we'll print preview that. And you can see it's showing us we have to pick these quantities of this part and for which service jobs they are. And of course, this form can be customized to show more or less information as needed. So at this point, the parts have been picked. Part two. If they want to go ahead and see now how those items would be asked to be picked to ask actually being picked, we go to our mass issue function here. And we pick our jobs that we have to go ahead and issue for. And we can look for just our service jobs. And they <clears throat> are going to be, uh, I believe, um, this job 155 was the one we were working with. And we'll click the Issue button, and we can see this part. There's two of these that need to be issued. So by going ahead and doing this, this is basically telling the system we've, we've actually pulled it from the warehouse and given it to the technician uh, for delivery uh, by hand. So that is now done, and the cycle is complete.